Pick up your gear and open your chest. Throw on your armor and head out on a quest. Hey, hey, it's a brand new day. On the Sword Coast, the allies will help with blades and bows and magic as well. Hey, hey, he was on their way. Fighting forever against overwhelming odds. Fighting together in favor of multiple gods. Idle champions of the forgotten realms. Idle champions, it's that you never ends. Idle champions, did you want to be? Idle champions. From water deep to Iceland Dale, head out the show, all shadow fell, hey, hey. Together we stay. Walk to the monsters, walk to the boss, walk to the right, it's never a loss, hey, hey. Bad guys to slay. Fighting forever against overwhelming odds. Fighting together in favor of multiple gods. I don't champions of the forgotten realms. I don't champions that you never realms. I don't champions that you want to dance. I don't champions. crazy so multiple issues at the moment all right i think i think the audio issue is fixed let's see if the dropped frames issues wants to fix itself no it doesn't so this will be fun uh <laughs> Welcome to Gar Wars Guide. To, let me start over. Welcome to Gar Wars Guide, the tutorial show. That means it's Saturday. Yay! I don't know. It doesn't feel the same. Oh, well. With me today is not Gabe, not Neptune, not even Saturn. With me is Mars. Mars is in the production booth. Mars is going to be grabbing your questions. Making fun of me in chat. You know, the usual. <laughs> the usual. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know it's live because there's tech issues. You know it's live because there's tech issues. Uh, today, uh, Gara's gu guide is to time gates. Uh, time gates. We've got a lot of new players uh, in the game. So we're going to talk about time gates. And it's good timing. <laughs> Because this weekend is a natural time gate weekend. Uh, now that, of course, isn't the only time you can do time gates, but it is probably one of the more popular times people will end up in a time gate. In a time gate. Uh, probably one of the few times I do time gates anymore on my main account, if I'm being honest. There comes a time <laughs> when, uh, when time gates just aren't you know, as big a deal. But early on, for new players, they're huge. So, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that today. Uh, all right. Uh, let me let me kill off this. All right. So, uh, 
so you, you can obviously you can access uh, your view of your time gates at any time up here. Uh, when you're in a run, it's this arch. It's the arch here. It's a gate, folks. Uh, you can hover over and see how many time gate pieces you have. I have too many. Uh, and you can you can access the time gate view. However, if you're already actively in a run in this party, you won't be able to actually start a time gate. Well, you can start it, but you won't be able to start your time gate adventure. So we're going to go ahead and close out. We're going to go ahead and close out. All right. So from the main... Oh, sorry. I just finished my uh, trials run. Uh, from the main screen... Over on the banner, campaign banner, you down at the bottom, you will see time gates, and you may or may not see Trials of Mount Tiamat if you have or haven't unlocked it yet. Uh, so time gates are always available here, and this is where you would click to start a time gate. It's going to show you how many at the top left, how many time gate pieces you have, and uh, and if you've got a f you know or slices, uh, you know if you've got a full time gate pizza, uh, you know, or it's a slice of pizza pie over here then uh then you can do a time gate usually because because usually it takes six usually it takes six uh once you have six that's why it says uh, 629 out of six once you have six you can go ahead and do a time gate run you'll notice that there's like a little hey there's a little symbol here this is Mistra symbol because or mistra excuse me i gotta get used to calling her mistra that is not how i read this in the books. Uh, Mistra, and it'll say zero, and zero percent gold. It's because time gates have their own favor, and it's Mistra's favor. It's always Mistra's favor, and whenever you do a time gate, you can earn favor so that you, just like everywhere else, you can push further, faster, etc. Uh, and there is a, you know, once you're done with your time gate, uh, it, it converts out into the main campaign of your choice, similar to the way an event converts, except whereas events convert at uh, at like an order of magnitude, which is the number over here at the top right after the E. Order of magnitude is uh, for every EO1, it's 10% in an event. In a time gate, uh, it's 2.5%. So much reduced, much reduced uh, conversion, which is why generally you're not as interested in the favor from it as you are from the things that you're going to get out of it. Exceptions to every rule, of course, there are times when maybe the best way for you to gain favor in a campaign is time gates and events uh, and your trials runs and all of these other multipliers, right? Uh, you'll know when that period comes, but usually when you're a beginner, uh, you know, you're worried more about trying to complete your time gate. Okay, now there is a, a fun little fact, it answers a bunch of questions uh, for you, you can read it in game, but let's be honest, if you wanted to read things in game, you wouldn't be here listening to me. <laughs> so, on a natural time gate weekend, uh, which is denoted here, free time gate weekend, um... On a natural time gate weekend, you don't need to spend any time gate pieces uh, to unlock a champion. However, uh, you you get you get a champion for free up here. I've prepared three time gates to past events. Select which gate to go through, and I can keep it open for a short period of time. Choose wisely. My power is only enough uh, uh, enough to open one on my own. Right. So uh, you have three days from the time it goes live. They always go live on noon pacifically on a Friday. And, uh, and kind of the gates close, well, sort of. Your access to picking one closes the following Monday at noon. However, once you open it, you have a fresh 72 hours, three days, to complete it. So if you do wait until Monday, if you're not, if you're watching this Monday morning because you went camping over the weekend, uh, as long as it's not a noon Pacific, uh, you can open your time gate and still have three days to do it. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, it isn't it isn't that you need to do it right away Friday at noon because then you lose time. I mean, it used to be. Enjoy living in the future. Um, you get the full three days now. So uh, up at the top, if you click the buttons, uh, these are the ones that you'll get free. Whatever three that show up at the top for you, it is individualized. 
on a natural time gate be uh, weekend. Uh, so you you know you can get whatever you want. Oh god, is it just really bad? Mars, how bad is this? Is the how bad is the frame dropping? Do I need to try to restart this? It looks it looks weird on my end sometimes. And sometimes I don't know. Is the audio coming through okay or is it just the video that's bad? Or is it on, is it the video that's just bad? Mine drops down to like uh, 160. Yeah, 180, 160. Uh okay. All right. Well, you know, just let people know. Uh, I mean, right now it's showing the perfect for me, so we'll see what happens. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so we're just going to continue, folks. Uh, apologies for the things outside of my control. I don't know. Uh, Twitch going to Twitch. No, this is probably my ISP it's screwing things up. Uh, but it looks all green at the moment, so let's keep going. All right, uh, every individual person uh, is going to uh, have their own three champions at the top. Because it's personalized. Uh, it's, there's always going to be, until you own all the champions, there's always going to be a champion you don't own. Uh, and because everybody collects ch different champions at different times, these has to be this has to be a personalized grouping. Right? Um, so it'll give you three champions at random. Uh, only one is guaranteed to not be uh, something you own. Uh, and yeah. And you get to pick one. Pick one. Uh, so you pick the one that you want. Um, I know a lot of new players would love to get a Briv as their free time gate. Uh, sorry for making you feel bad. Uh, and go. Now, there, of course, is the list of every other cha event champion that's ever arrived in the game ever down here. Uh, you know, those are the ones that are going to cost actual time gate pieces. Uh, when you're doing an actual time gate, when you're doing a regular time gate, not a natural one, not the free time gate weekend, uh, you know, any of these, you pick any of these from the list, uh, and they're going to cost you six time gate pieces, right? When an event is active, or not an event, when a season is active, words, when a season is active, the, the season champions, so whichever champions are featured in that season, are going to be half price time gates. And that's so that you can more easily collect them all so you can do your season quests. Uh, it's a nice way, you know, they're 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 basically they they rebalance uh, a bunch of champions and then they give you access to them at a at a discounted rate so that you can both enjoy them and use them to earn all kinds of good stuff uh, over the course of the season. Okay. Uh, it is always a great. It is always great to just pick these up once the once the season starts. Um, I kind of say wait until the season starts because sometimes they give some away for free. Uh, but but because they're dis, but you want to wait until they're discounted uh, at least and go with it. Or the rest of the time, hey, may, you know, choose wisely. Um, you know, some champions are going to help your early game progress better than others. Uh, if you're looking to be, you know, to progress efficiently through the game. Uh, otherwise, you know, pick pick what's fun for you. If you're a big fan of of the Heroes of Aroas, grab them. If you're the big fan of the Awful Ones, go for it. If you're if you're just all about the C team, fire away. Uh, if you're a Brimstone Angels fan, we got we got you covered with with three champions. You know, you can grab whatever you like. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of filters now for time gates, uh, especially if you're you know on a non time gate weekend, so that you can look uh, to see to see what you have. Like unowned, uh, there aren't any that are unowned. There's still three natural here, right? Uh, you can just look at the ones that you own. You can look at ones you don't have yet, and you just show them all. There's popularity ratings, and I want to be clear: popularity popularity is is misconstrued sometimes because there's no explanation of what this means. Popularity is is how many how many people recently have been doing time gates for those champions, which is why you'll see all of the season champions are at the top, and they're followed by other a, a couple other Ak Inc and C team members, and you know one of the more recent uh, event champions that if people missed, they wanted to pick up again, right? 
Uh, so this this gets skewed often. It isn't about it isn't about the most popular champions in terms of play time. Like who gets used the most? That's not it. That's not it. It's about who's being time gated regularly. Recently. And that's going to shift based off things like seasons. It's going to shift based off uh, events arriving and people maybe doing time gates for, for past champions that arrived with that event. Uh, it's going to be, you know, maybe people uh, just deciding they want a speed champion like Sentry. That's the only reason I can imagine Sentry's right here. Uh, <laughs> you know, people are going to want to pick up. Uh, uh, Rosie's been uh, picked up lately a lot. I mean, good for Rosie. Uh yeah, so just keep in mind, this doesn't mean, like, the most used champions. This means just whoever people have been... Yeah, people have been... People are stoked for Stokey. Uh, the people have been... Are going to do different things, right? Item level is going to reference your item level, because one of the things you're getting uh, from your time gates uh, is gear. It's not just unlocking a champion, it's gear for that champion. Uh, so you can look at, uh, you know, your lowest... This is going to, my, my lowest is 200. Sorry, everyone. It was lower than that. Uh, and my highest apparently is uh, average. It's looking at average item level. My highest apparently is Virgil. Uh, well, it's actually, it's actually Briv, but, but Briv isn't available down here to be sorted. He's already up here. <laughs> He's already up here in the top row. Uh, time to event is, I mean, it's kind of trying to let you know, like, when is when is their event coming? Uh, and, you know, it's uh, somewhat accurate. Here's the problem with time to event. Uh, events only include the two most recent years of champions and, and, and then the newest champion to arrive. So there's only ever three champions that are going to show up in an event. Uh, we are currently, we just wrapped up year six of events. We're about to start year seven, which is High Harvest Tide. High Harvest Tide is where Stokey arrives, where all these champions arrived. The two champions that are going to be returning are the ones that are grayed out and unavailable for you to time gate. And they do that so that you know not to time gate them because you're about to get them free in the event. But these others, you can't do anything with them in the event. So the time to event is, it's useful in a certain sense. It really needs to dump out all of these others and just show you that uh, champions who are actually going to be arriving in an event. Uh, but maybe that'll be a feature at some point in the future, right? Uh, and then you can do it in the reverse, so the ones that are furthest away, and that's actually sometimes helpful because it's like, hey, uh, who who is it going to take like a year for you to wait for, potentially, if they're even showing up in that event anymore, right? Uh, all right, and then event year is, is referring to event year. So if we hop all the way back here and we, you know, up, uh, these are event year one champions. Uh, so Stokey was the very first, uh, event champion in the game. Stokey was the, the, like before Stokey, it was just the core 12 and, and hitch. They were, and then, and then they started rolling in events and Stokey was the very first one. And so you can actually, so if you sort by year, you can see how the chip, what, what order all the champions arrived in. And you can see that not only was Stokey the first uh, event champion, Strix was the first content creator champion. Uh, everything else was either a, a book or a CNE, like a lore thing or a book or a CNE original or maybe a game like Daddius and, you know, pretty neat, pretty fun just to know, uh, you know, how things showed up. And you could do it in reverse to show you like what was the most recent champion that arrived, which is a Starion. Uh, Lazel and Astarian arriving course from Baldur's Gate 3. All right. And then you can just go alphabetical because you're like, God, I can't, why am I looking? I just, I know what their name is. Uh, and you can find it this way, right? So there are some sorting, uh, sorting hat options here for you. Uh, figure out the, you know, what you want to use. I almost kind of want to always use year now, but alphabetical is probably the best. Uh, easier to find. Uh, but on a natural time gate weekend again, 
doesn't matter because what you're going to want to choose is one of these top three. The biggest question we get asked is which champion should I choose? Uh, and the answer is it depends. It depends. It's always going to depend. Uh, yeah, it's always going to depend. So uh, what does it depend on? Let's talk about some of the ways you make a decision here. Um, there are a couple champions in the game that are kind of like, if they show up at a natural time gate weekend and you don't own them, grab them. Like, no questions asked. Grab them. Prib's one of those. That's what I said. There's a lot of new players out there going... Oh. Uh, Briv's one of them. Briv's one of them. Uh, Briv is probably one of the most sought-after champions in the game for uh, tanking, healing, support, and speed reasons. Because he he's, he does all those things. And he's the best in the game at all of them. <laughs> like, the best in the game at all of them. Uh, you know, so no matter what, I'm going to talk about some other ways to make decisions, and disregarding all of those i'm just going to tell you if you're a new player and briv shows up pick briv who's another one uh that if they were to show up in your in your random three that you would just immediately pick uh, uh here we go human who is definitely a human and not three kobolds in a trench coat uh human for a new for a new player again but these, this is for newer players, and, and newer is just kind of anyone who doesn't have these champions yet. <laughs> Briv and Humon. Humon, again, for, for speed reasons. Speed reasons. Uh, Humon and Briv are, are the top, kind of the top two uh, fast speed people. They require some item investment, but they're still a big deal to pick up early. Uh, I'll tell you again, my my third, if I'm rounding out like three, if I'm rounding out a top three of champions that you grab them if you see them, if they come up, if you're a newer player and you don't have them, is Krull. The Torture Turtle. <laughs> the Torture Turtle. Uh, I know not everybody's going to agree with this one, but Krull, uh, arguably one of the best early game snowball champions. So much of a snowball champion, he needs a snowball skin. Unfortunately, he already has like a Krampus skin, or I uh, so I doubt we'll ever get a snowball skin. But uh, Krull is 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 pushing power and gold find, and early on, those two things are what you need to really start a snowball and idol champion. And the best part about Krull, unlike Briv and Human, who actually need gear to access their speed uh, and other functionalities, Crawl doesn't care. Crawl's uh, power functions without gear. Gear just makes it better. Crawl is a fantastic early game pickup. So, those are my three. We're going to go into some other uh, ways to make decisions here. Uh, so just know, if, if one of those three champions uh, pop up, as a new player, it's kind of a, a yeah, uh-huh, grab those. Uh, above, in my opinion, and I've been playing the game now for six years, uh, have I? Yes. Oh, crap. I just passed my six-year anniversary. I haven't played the game for six years now, and I've been making guides for almost that long. Uh, when Liar's Night rolls around, that will be my six-year anniversary of making guides for idle champions. Liar's Night was the very first guide I ever made for this game. Uh, so, in all of that time, in all of the new player accounts that I've run, the three picks that I'm just like, if I see them pop up, I'm like, jackpot! Uh, Briv, Human, Krull. Again, for different reasons. Briv, Briv is kind of for pushing and speed. Human is for speed. Krull is for pushing power and gold find. Those three... Uh, I just run with them. I grab them and I run uh, all the way to the favor bank uh, or the gem bank, whichever, whichever. Uh, all right. Uh, so how do you make a decision otherwise? 
there are some things to keep in mind. Uh, whenever a season, now that we have seasons going, uh, I have altered my recommendations. Uh, whenever there is a season going, seasons are such a big deal in terms of the power that they give you by, by completing their quests that picking up the season champions, so whichever ones are marked with the discount, just getting them, you don't have to do them repeatedly or something. Uh, this is top, top billing. Top billing. Uh, not only are you going to get them faster, they only cost three time gate pieces. Getting them is then going to let you complete quests, and some of the first, like some of the early rewards for quests are bundles of three more time gate pieces. So you basically just get, you unlock one, and then you earn three time gate pieces, and then you unlock another, and then pretty soon you'll earn, earn three more time gate pieces just from doing the quest, and then you can get another and another. It's the fastest way to get time. The seasons are the fastest way to unlock these champions and get free time gate pieces. Because the thing about time gate pieces is naturally they only occur as a, as a loot drop off of a boss once every five-ish days. Five to six, depending on your drop timer. Uh, it, it will lock you out of getting another one for five days. And then because it's a random loot chance, it could be, uh, you know, up to another day before you loot yours. Uh, but every time you kill a boss and you and it doesn't drop one, the chance to loot one increases until you're guaranteed to get one. So there is built-in bad luck protection. So keep in mind, uh, that's what we're looking for. Uh, you know, if, if it's a season... And, and, you know, you're spending time gate pieces, spending time gate pieces, one of these. If it's a natural time gate weekend, we're going to have some other rules. But if you're spending time gate pieces, one of these. Uh, I don't think... Mars, can you confirm? I don't think these five will show up in a natural time gate rotation. If they do, though, I would still say, you know, if, if unless you see Mars, unless you see, excuse me, unless you see Briv, uh, Human, or Crawl, you know, again, these kind of are top priority. If they do show up, grab them. But I don't, I think they just, I think they're just locked in as discounted. Uh, it's a more recent uh, change, so, or at least it was a more recent change thought about. Uh, I don't know if it's actually in it. Uh, so, again, first priority. Don't know the answer to that one. Okay, it's fair. First priority, uh, then that means that the shit probably isn't in. So first priority, uh, season champions. Okay. Second priority, because seasons are now a thing that are just going to be nonstop. They're going to, one's going to end and a new one's going to start. If you didn't know that, now you know. Uh, season champions, uh, so you're going to always be picking up new season champions every new season. There is another season champion you're going to want to pick up after you get the current actual champions that arrived. And that champion is... There we go. Strongheart. Strongheart uh, is, is the seasoned knight. Uh, he has an ability called seasoned knight, which allows you to complete... Uh, at base, allows you to complete your season quests twice as fast. You just have to own him. Doesn't even need to be in that formation you're running to grind season stuff. You just have to own Strongheart. He also has a feat that, once you unlock it, will change that double credit to triple. So Strongheart helps you get more of your season rewards faster uh, and complete your season stuff faster. So, grab your season champs first priority from time gates, whether, whether it's a natural time gate weekend or whether you're spending time gate pieces. After that, grab Strongheart. And what that means is if you do see Strongheart, this is, these, these, these recommendations work for natural time gate weekends. If you see Strongheart as your natural time gate choice, grab him. Grab him. You know, as long as you see one of these kind of priorities pop up in your natural uh, one in one of your three options, grab it. Where you're going to have to get more discerning is when you have more than one good option. 
If you ran the trifecta and had Briv, Human, and Crawl, you'd have to make a very hard decision. And and no one's really going to give you a good answer to that. Even I wouldn't really. I have my personal preference. But ultimately, you have to decide what you're looking for. Are you looking for like a combo pusher and speed? Are you looking for just pure speed? Are you looking for early game snowball for power and progression? You have to decide what your goals are for your account based off the other champions you have. And after you see like, you know, you've got your season champs and you've picked up Strongheart, you have to start making those decisions uh, kind of as, as the best option for you with the champions that you have and what you're trying to accomplish. So with that in mind, uh, after you get kind of the easy choice of, well, are they a season champion? I'm going to grab those. Are they strong heart? Uh, yeah. When you start spending time gate pieces or you have a, a weekend and it doesn't include one of these, you have to start making uh, tougher decisions. Uh, there are a certain number of champions in the game that are termed speed champions. We just talked about two. One is Briv, one is Human. If you want to start choosing some speed champions because you're trying to complete things faster, you might lean into that. Unfortunately, there's no sorting for that. So you have to do some research and find out who speed champions are. I've got, I've got a video guide for that. Uh... But you can also just ask the community, uh, and they'll let you know. Uh, and there are some, you know, meta pushing champions, champions that if you pick up uh, early, they're going to serve you uh, as a pushing champion, as like a go-to champion in your pushing formations for a long, long time. Uh, those might be good choices too. But one of the things that we recommend early on is that you. Uh, you know, outside of this kind of stuff is that you look at uh, attempting to earn the champions you need to access split the party. Split the party is this is this little button up here. It allows you to get background parties because you normally start the game with just this first party, one party, and that's it. But you can get background parties so that you can run more formations at once, doing more for more things. Uh, I've changed the names of mine <laughs> because the old ones were outdated. Now I've uh, this more accurately represents what I do with my parties. Uh, doesn't be doesn't mean it has to be what you do with yours, but you know. uh, but more importantly, uh, even than getting another background party, is it it lets you access Modron cores. Uh, there's different ways to earn different cores, and I talked about that on last week's tutorial show. You can uh, hop back onto the VOD for that, uh, either on this, uh, either on the Twitch channel or uh, the CNE Games YouTube channel. Uh, it's Garwar's Guide to Modron Flow Revisited from last weekend. We went over uh, how to get these and, and whatnot, but that has to do with Split the Party. And Split the Party, uh, it will tell you that when you first open it, it's just your party, and then it's this panel here. It says, this party is currently locked. By completing the listed requirements, you can assign champions to a brand new party with Zone Modron Core, blah, 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 blah. And the listed requirements are, for the very first split the party, have two champions in every bench slot. Your bench being the, the row when you're in an adventure that lists out everyone from Brunor to Archon, right? Once you get a second champion on that slot, there will be a little these little white arrows. Now we call those, the technical term is a swippy swappy button. Uh, there's a little swippy swappy button, and once you have a swippy swappy button on every bench slot, you can do split the party and get your first background party and your first Modron core. And we very much encourage this as your kind of your first goal and the way you make decisions about picking a champion from natural time gates and paid time gates. Okay, which is why you may have seen some people in chat going, we need a sort by bench slot, and it's been asked for, and they've said, sure, we'll get that in there. No ETA, uh, but yes, because there are times where where you just need a you need somebody in slot three, uh, and there's no way there's no way for you to know who that is really. Uh, when if you if you don't own champions, it will show you. If you click if the, when you look at the picture, 
instead of gear, which this is, these are your gear pieces, and this is your pity timer to your next epic. These are things you need when you own a champion. Instead of this, it'll show you who else you own in that bench slot. So that's one way you can look at it. There's just no sorting. You look for champions that there's only one champion in there, and it's the core champion. Uh, so trying to fill in the second champion in all of your bench slots is a priority. Again, now a lower priority than picking up your season champions and Strongheart. But it is a priority. Again, those those three, that kind of trifecta I said at the beginning, Briv, Human, and Crawl, if they show up in a natural time gate weekend, pick them even if, regardless of your split the party progress. Uh, also, maybe just in a paid time gate, you might, once you've got your season champions, you could just pick them regardless of your progress. It'll be okay. All right. Uh, but the thing to know is, you know, use information to make good decisions. One of the good decisions is working towards split the party one. After you get two champions in every bench slot, how do you pick then? Well, it's kind of easy. You work towards split the party two. <laughs> That's, I know. Sounds funny. It's like, well, that's pretty straightforward. Yeah, that one needs three champions in every slot, right? So you're making uh, decisions in these slots, and, and a lot of times the decisions you're making are based off either who's the kind of best in slot, which is getting harder to determine because a lot of times each the champions have specific scenarios they're good in. Um, so who's who's so then break it down. Who's a good deep pushing champion? Uh, versus who's a good speed champion. And we don't have speed champions in every slot, uh, but they make up a lot of them. So these are these are good ways to decide uh, what you're going to look for. So a lot of times when people ask me, hey, I need uh, champions in 3, 5, and 10 for split the party, I will give them two options. I will say, here's here's an option for pushing and here's an option for speed. Or I might say, here's here's uh, pushing like this and here's pushing like that. Because sometimes there's, you know, niche scenarios if there's no speed champion. Uh, those are good ways to make decisions about that. Okay. All right. Let's talk about uh, what are all these things that show up here? Uh, right off the top again, you know, this is the, you're going to be choosing in a natural time gate weekend. You're going to be choosing uh, free at the top. One of these three. You only get one of them. That's it. They're just offering you one champion for free. This little box, uh, it indicates uh, the 50 and the 75, or, or a higher number, indicate how far you need to go in the adventures that are in a time gate to get the rewards. Uh, when, you first, uh, you know, when you first access a time gate field, they're all going to say 50 and 75. But once you've done a time gate for someone recently... The number goes up by 50 for each one, which is why this is 125. Okay. So the more you do uh, just over and over and over again, the more you do it, the more it's going to go up. If you just try to farm one champion, it's going to go up by 50 every time, which means you're going to have to go further and further and further. And as a newer player, not really viable. So then you pick somebody else. And what happens then, uh, the goals for like the person that like, after I do this, this 100 and 125 on Nahara is going to drop down to a 75, 100, like it is on Kathris. That's, that's the way it's supposed to work. That's the way it's supposed to work at least. Uh, so it's, they will go down over time, which is why, uh, at a certain point later on in your time gate career, when you've unlocked all the champions. That is a thing, like I have. You will be trying to do time gates primarily to help gear them up, to get them to full epic gear. And when you start grinding gear in a time gate, what you want to find are three champions that you want to get full epic and do them in a rotation. Because you're going to do one, it's going to go up by 50. You're going to do the next one, it's going to go down by 25. This one will go down by 25. You're going to do the next one, this one goes down by 25. And then you come back to the first one, it's back to that original goal. Makes it super easy. After that, you know, after you get all of your champions in full epic, uh, you know, manage it however you'd like. Uh, but doing a three champ rotation once you get to grinding gear in time gates uh, is a good idea. Uh, quick note, uh, time gates aren't the only way you get your champions to full epic. 
Yeah, time gates uh, and then patron chests. Opening patron chests is the other way you get epic gear for champions. Uh, just naturally. Um, and seasons, but you don't have a way to control how the seasons are going to turn out. All right, so uh, the other numbers here, like I said, uh, if you don't own a champion, it's gonna, it's not going to show this information down here with the average item level, your gear uh, ratings, and uh, and the pity timer. It's instead going to show the other champions you have in that slot. So that's an easy way to know who you don't own yet versus someone you have and you just have gears. It'll show the gear. Uh, and that's a way for you to help figure out, well, who do I want to gear up? Um, the pity timer uh, showing is is because for uh, for gold chests, gold chests have pity timers. What that means is bad luck protection. It's a guaranteed epic uh, in a certain number of chests, and that number is 10. Every 10 chests, uh, you are guaranteed an epic. So even if you have horrible luck, every 10th chest you a gold chest you open for a champion, you're going to get an epic piece of gear. So knowing where your pity timer is, is important because uh, right now this says I'm one out of four. Well, in a time gate, you're only going to get three gold chests. So I could do this time gate. It wouldn't get me a new piece of epic equipment. I could do this time gate. It wouldn't get me a new piece of epic equipment. They would both get me closer, but it wouldn't get me one. Whereas Briv is set. He gets one in the next two chests. So there's an argument if, if what I'm doing is farming gear. There's an argument for for maybe picking Briv, if, if Briv wasn't the go-to choice for most people anyway. There's an argument for picking Briv, right? Uh, when you get to the point where I am, where you have a full epic on everything, it become, I, I make my decisions then about who am I looking to level up. My Briv, he's gear, he's geared, he's good. So what I look for then is the lowest average item level. Caddy Bree, solid in the 700s because she had a season that fed her Lots of item levels. This is why it's important to grab these season champions. You get a lot of item levels from seasons. Makes them really strong. Uh, so I'm going to go with the... I, this, I am. I, people are going to be sad, but I'm going to pick Nahara. I'm going to go with Nahara. It doesn't matter that she's at a higher goal. I have the power to, to push through this goal, no problem. I'm going to go there because she has my lowest average item level. So these are the kind of the progressive way you might make decisions about who you're choosing. Now, if I had similar uh, item levels, like if they were both, if all three of these were at 200, I would pick the one that I want to go up first. In that case, I would pick Briv. Briv would be the priority. Briv just has, you look at, what you look at then is you look at who has gear that scales in a way that you want lots of item levels on them. Uh, and Briv is definitely one of those champions. Okay. Uh, for his speed effect, primarily. But there are also champions who uh, have items that... Uh, they have abilities that have items that buff them, and those abilities are multiplicatively stacking abilities, and the items buff them pre-stack, and that's the OP way in Idle Champion. Multiplicatively stacking is the good way. If you see an ability that says it stacks multiplicatively, that's the good way. Those are the strong abilities. When they have an item or feat support that applies pre-stack that's the op way so a lot of times you will look for things like that from champions uh when you're making choices about not only uh potentially who to go get more gear for once you get to the point where you're only focused on gear but also where to put your blacksmithing contracts they tend to go to speed champions and multiplicatively stacking pre-stack champions first first because they, they're just going to get a solid return on your investment is why all right so uh so you're going to see you're going to see the goal levels you're going to see either uh if you don't own the champion you're going to see how many champions you have in that slot already uh and you're going to see if you own the champion you'll see item levels the gear you have and your pity timer and you can make your choice accordingly uh so uh, when you click one, yeah, open them. You might only open one time gate for free. It's reminding you, you only get one, uh, and it gives you the level requirements and we're going to say open. This is the screen that you get once you open it. Uh, you know, you can see time gate pieces and it doesn't matter anymore because you can't use them from this screen. You'll see your favor, which is your gold multiplier. Uh, you'll see your current equipment still. Uh, you'll see what, uh, event they originally arrived in because, 
because this is important. Uh, this determines the kind of the enemies you're going to run into, right? Knowing their event, you can go then on the internet to, oh, I don't know, the Idol Champions subreddit to my guides and look for a guide to Founders Day or just for Nahara. But Founders Day would tell you what enemies, my guide to Founders Day will tell you what enemies you're running into. So you can plan accordingly, right? Uh, but then you see the, you can see that how long you have, uh, until the gate closes on its own. You can close the gate early. It is a click and hold requirement. Uh, this, this you only want to do once you're done. Uh, you can leave, you can let it close naturally, or you can close it early if you're going to be doing multiple time gates. So you've got a bunch of pieces and you want to do them back to back. You can close it early after you finish it. You don't have to wait. You'll see the two adventures, so complete area 100 and one area 25, and their rewards. If you did not own Nahara or whoever you chose, she would show up here as a reward as well. So the first adventure, you unlock the champion and get a gold chest. But you get uh, two adventures in a row with ascending uh, area goals. And then you get one of their variants, their variants from the event they arrived in. So in this, it's going to be one of them somewhat at random. Uh, for me, it is purely random, but if you have never, uh, if you've never done a time gate for this champion before, you've never done an event for them. It's just going to give you one of the three variants purely at random. The next time you do a time gate for that champion, it will give you one of the two variants that you haven't done yet. Again, random, but 50% chance for each. Once you've done two of them. The third time gate you do for that champion, you will be guaranteed the variant that you didn't do. This is a way for you to complete those variant, do all three variant achievements, even if those champions don't come out in events anymore. Okay. You're going to see uh, the text here is going to be the restriction. Uh, you'll see your complete area, which is 175. So this is the third variant. This is the hardest variant. Uh, cause it's either 75, 125 or 175. Uh, and so, you know, by the, by the complete area goal, kind of how much favor you're going to need to, before you want to do this. It's something that I, I list out in the guides, but basically you need like E4. It's pretty easy to get to the 75 goal. Uh, maybe E6 or 7 for the, or E5, somewhere between E5 and E7 for the 125. Uh, but for 175, E8 or higher. And again, that's orders of magnitude up here. We use scientific notation. It's just the easiest way to describe it. Uh, but you're going to need to read the restriction and try to do it. Now, it's it's this kind of stuff. There is no penalty. Unlike in an event where you're spending currency to do this, you already paid your currency up front. You get to do these. You get to do these each once. And if you fail, all you lose is time and whatever potions that you used, right? Not a big deal. But they do give you a free play. In case you don't get enough favor, I recommend uh, getting your favor in these first two adventures. If you don't get enough favor to get to, you know, get to like E8 for a 175, you can do a free play. There are no rewards in free play other than favor, though. I want to point that out. Uh, and a free play in a time gate does not count as an event free play for achievements. The variants uh, count for achievements, but this doesn't count for achievements. So I need to get to area 100. When I open this up, what I want to do is uh, I want to I'm just going to turn this off real quick. Uh, I'm going to want to build a formation. Uh, you know, I'm going to have no favor. Uh, I, I'm getting gold find here. I have a lot of gold find because of my Modron core. So uh, I can build out uh, whatever kind of formation that I want. Um, you know, do whatever uh, appeals to you. I'm, of course, going to build a speed formation because I want to do this quickly. Uh, your each, uh, each different champion has a different formation layout. As you can see, this is a single tank front line or a single champion front line into a grouping and then single uh, champions in the back. This is just Nahara's uh, formation layout. So this is the kind of puzzle that you have to solve when doing uh, Nahara's formation or Nahara's uh, event stuff or time gate stuff, however you're doing it. It's always going to be the same. Uh, what I like to recommend is uh, starting off in a time gate. Uh, if you've got potions, 
Um, I throw down 15 minute potions, but that's because I've got speed champions and a lot of power. On new player accounts, I will throw down like a, an hour potion and what I'll do if I have them. Uh, I'll throw down a champ damage, a gold find, uh, a speed, and a click damage. And that lets me just race through this as quickly as possible. Uh, again, on a new player account, I'd use an hour. On my account, I would normally use a 15 minute, but this is demonstration purposes. purposes because that's going to get you what you need. You need the gold find uh, to earn favor to be doing that variant, right? And I, I treat these first two adventures as favor pushes, which means I don't just go to whatever the area requirement is. Whatever it says up here that I have to get to, uh, you know, 100. I don't just go here. I go, I go deep because I want that favor. Uh, as long as I end up with enough favor, I'm going to be fine. But you have to earn it first, right? So I'm going to treat this like a favor run, and I'm going to try to earn the favor. Uh, and I'll do that for that period of time. On my account, I can do 15 minutes. On a new player account, I need an hour. I need an hour to push that far and earn that favor. So gold find's going to help. Uh, all champs damage potions are going to help. Uh... Honestly, champion health might help. I don't need it here, but you, you know, uh, you can, you can pop that as well. Click damage is going to mean, uh, I, I can actually, uh, I don't have to put my gold that I'm earning into leveling up click damage over here at the bottom left because that's the fire breath potion is just going to increase my click damage based off my formation power. So I'm killing instantly with the uh, familiars right now. I don't have, and I can just push that way. It's just another way to speed up my progress. Another way to speed up my progress. Um, let me see. I'm going to just make decisions here. Obviously, make whatever decision you want for your for your formation, whoever, whatever champions you have, and push with them. Go as far as you can. Earn your favor. Complete it. Once you've met that area goal, you can click complete. Uh, you know, and you have the favor, a good amount of favor. Uh, click complete. Do the next adventure. Again, kind of repeat, push deep, grab a bunch of favor, but not like, you know, you don't have to work super hard at it. I refer to it as kind of the rule of uh, low hanging fruit. Grab whatever is easy to get. Don't necessarily work super hard for favor unless you need it to complete that variant. Once you get the first two adventures done and you have the favor you need to attempt the, the variant, do the variant. Once you read its reach its completion goal, Complete it. You don't have to push deep in a variant. There's no reason to. Variants, in general, you just go to their completion and bounce. Okay. If you decide for some reason you want to keep doing, working towards more favor in a time gate, you can do that in a free play. Uh, and there's one other reason you, you might want to try to push a little deeper in a time gate. As we said uh, before, the rewards for the time... Oh, go away. The rewards for the time gate uh, are three gold chests, but you can get silver chests from a time gate. And the way you get silver chests is by reaching, Not it's, it's not about doing free plays over and over like an event. This is not an event. It's by reaching uh, high watermarks of 100 levels. So when I get to area 100 here, like I have, I have no Nahara chests in my inventory, when I get to area 100 and I complete it, a Nahara chest will automatically appear in my inventory. Now, if I were to complete the run and then do another run and reach 100 again, I would not see another new chest arrive because I already earned that one. I already earned that one this time gate. Uh, so now I would need to get to area 200, right? So it's about pushing to further areas of 100 to get silvers. Again, I treat this as low-hanging fruit. Uh, don't kind of spend three days trying to grind out uh, favor, like enough favor to get yourself progression to get to like, you know, the next uh, whatever 100 for a single silver chest. Grab whatever's easy to get. If, if you push super deep and, and, and on a run and, and you're like, wow, I got to like uh, 170, I think if I did a free play, I could probably break 200 with the favor I got off of 170 uh, because my variant was 75. I don't even need a lot, right? Sure, grab that, hop in a free play, grab that 200. But if what you got to was like 407 
and that was a challenge. Don't spend the rest of your time trying to get to 500. It's not worth it for a single silver chest. Just complete your time gate and move on. Now, once you close that time gate and then you open it again in the future, it resets the three gold chests you can earn, of course. Otherwise, what would be the point? Uh, and it also resets that high watermark back down to, to, to the 100 level. So every time you do uh, another time gate for that champion, you can earn more of those silver chests that way. Uh, but just know it's not. It's these time gates and events, two completely separate things. In terms of, they both deliver champions to you. They both deliver uh, chests to get gear. But they do these things in different ways. Uh, people often get them confused. Often. Uh, it happens a lot, so don't freak out about it if you've been confused by it or or if you get confused in the first it happens it happens just know that's what's going on now if we go over here see now i got got two silver nahara chests why did i get two folks there is a a, a higher level bonus you can get i think i don't care is it blessings or perks i don't remember off the top of my head but it gives you a chance to or i think it's a perk it gives you a chance to earn a second uh yeah it's Silvery Gates from Mert, Tier 7 Global. Time Gate Silver Chest Drops have a 50% chance of being doubled. So mine got doubled. But this is a higher end perk for Mert. Uh, you'll get there eventually, but it's not something you would try to grind out as a new player. And, you know, I mean, you'll get there pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, but just focus on uh, getting... Focus on, on your Time Gates on just... Go in, grab all three gold chests. If you got easy time, if you got easy silvers, great. Complete your time gate. Move on with your life. That's I. It's just in my opinion, that's for new players. It's really kind of what your focus is. Grab your three gold. Grab the champion, the three gold chests, a couple silvers, maybe a few, uh, and then bounce. It's time gates aren't where you need to spend your time. Eh? Uh, but you do want to take advantage of them when they're when whenever you have whenever there's a natural time gate weekend or whenever you have enough time gate pieces to do another run to do another run uh, because collecting champions, unlocking new champions is a big deal in this game. You want to make sure you're doing that uh, as regularly as possible as regularly as possible. Hold on, let me... Uh, I wonder now, I've probably done this and I have a save formation. I, I save the formations. I do, that's pretty good, actually. It's got Nahara in there, though. That's interesting. <laughs> We're going to save over that. Uh, but save your formations, like if, if there's a formation you like. When you come around to do it again, you may have new champions that are better, and then you just do this. You go save and you go over, right? Overwrite. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go, yeah, that's what I want, but I also want to make sure I have the specialization choice. Yep, those are good. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. You can also change your feats if you want now uh, on this page. Uh, but just set all that up and, and do your run. Right? That's time gates. That's that's really all you're doing. The the hardest part about time gates is just trying to make a what you feel is a good decision about how to either spend your time gate pieces uh, or make the choice between those three champions. And like I said, kind of personal to you. There's people who will give you advice. Sometimes that advice is wrong. <laughs> If you're a brand new player and somebody's like, you should get Artemis. When Artemis season was was going, absolutely. Now, not so much, because now it would take an immense investment for you to gear up and get item levels on Artemis. Uh, and Artemis isn't really a new player champion. It was during the season because seasons feed you gear and item levels what they're designed to do uh artemis is an in-game uh dps mid well mid 
in the mid and end game, once you can invest lots of item levels, yeah, sure. But as a newer player, you need to focus on, uh, like I said, seasons. Get your season champions. Uh, grab Strongheart because he's effectively a season champion in every season. He helps you so much. Uh, and and then start working on Split the Party 1 and then Split the Party 2. There is a Split the Party 3. However, I'm of the mind that once you, uh, once you get to Split the Party 2... And you unlock your third or second background party, so your third overall party, and your fast core, because that's the reward, that you can ignore split the party three and then focus more on if you haven't been fleshing out a speed formation for gem farming, that's the time to do it. That's the time to do it. Because it's going to help you level up your fast core. And then it's going to help you get a lot of gems, and those gems get you chests, and those chests get you power for all your champions. Um, and that's kind of the goal after that. Um, so once you've gotten through those, once you've made your time gate decisions to get to that point, at that point it's, it's like I said, maybe lean heavily into speed champions if you haven't. Uh, and there's I've, I've got a video guide for that. Uh, you could talk to the community about that too, about, you know, if there's any new ones that weren't in that video guide, cause there's at least one that isn't in there. Uh, and then, you know, look at deep meta pushing champions. Cause that's going to be about the time where you might want to start looking at those too. Right. I mean, you can always pick them up along the way with your choices, but if you haven't, if there's some that you missed time to go back and get them time to go back and get them. All right, folks, uh, I'm going to take a short musical interlude, and then we're going to come back, and I'm going to answer all the questions. Mars has been grabbing questions. As long as you put, like it shows down below, a question colon in front of your question, Mars has been grabbing your question from chat and putting it in a document so that I can answer it. I'm going to go through and answer all the on-topic ones first, so the things about time gates, and uh, and then I'm going to come back and do, uh, and then I'll do all of the stuff, uh, other stuff after that. So if you have more specific pointed questions, fire away. Uh, I'll be right back. What is this? Oh, because as I mentioned, uh, Stokey was the very first event champion and High Harvest Tide is coming up. Uh, it is the next event. Uh, I, but you can only get Stokey through time gates. This is Stokey's The Key of Rock. Enjoy. Explosions, well, they never miss. 
Cause it's gonna be our time to rock. Yeah. All right, and we're back. Uh, okay, I'm going to dive into these questions. Vegeta, why is Egbert's time gate grayed out and unavailable? Uh, because they are showing up in the next event and are actually available to be uh, uh, obtained for free in the event. So they don't want you to do, like, unlock Egbert and then feel bad because you just spent six time gate pieces on him. That's that's basically it. It's a nice little quality of life upgrade they added to some somewhere along the line. Uh, Andy Moore, what's the purple bar on each card? Uh, again, that's uh, if we go in here, I might as well just open this up. So since we're talking, oh, I can't. Dang it! Uh, because I'm in a time gate. Uh, but I can I can show you over here. This purple bar is used everywhere. There's a gold chest. Uh, it just it's your pity timer. It tells you when you're going to get another uh, a thing. So the next, like here, this one says I'm guaranteed an epic in this golden chest. And guess what? There it is, right? And then the pity timer refreshes and it's one in 10 again. That's just how gold chests work. And in time gates, this was a quality of life feature that was asked for in the past. In time, one of the reasons you, you're trying to figure out like which time gate to choose and making good decisions is, oh, well, when am I going to get an, a, which one of these natural time gates am I going to get a free uh, epic out of, like a guaranteed epic out of? It's a good reason, you know, if, if all champions are basically the same in your mind, like, well, I'm, you know, none of those are priority for me, but one of them has a pity timer of three you, or less, you choose that one. You choose that one. Uh, Sonation, when should you push during a time gate for beginners with a few blessings bonuses? Again, really the only push you need to do is, is in the kind of the first two adventures, just to try to get enough favor to be able to do whatever the variant is. Uh, so if the variant is at 75, you're good. You don't even really have to push. You can, you can do, cause you can basically hop in and do the 50, maybe put, you know, do a get a little bit past 50, try to get to 60 or, or 75, but you can get to six seventy five on your first run, complete it, go do the 75 on the next one, then go to the 75 in the variant because you're probably fine. Uh, you'll have to look at the restriction though. Whenever the restriction restrictions are important, it's important to learn how to read restrictions. If it is a difficult restriction, you need more favor. And that might be a reason to, to push for more favor in a time gate. But generally speaking, pushing to get silver chests is... You know, there are, there again, there's exceptions to every rule. There are times people push for chests. But early on, when it's hard to push a uh, hundred new levels, um, it's not necessarily worth your time for a silver chest. If there was a chance at a gold chest, yeah, but... No. But there's not. There's not. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Similarly related to time gates. Is there somewhere in the game to view abilities of champions you don't own? No. No. That's why it's important to uh, to lean on the community. Uh, also, just again, it, it makes it really easy. Like, if it's, is it a season champ? Grab it. Is it strong heart for the seasons? Grab it. Is it not one of those, but it's it's going to help you get split the party? Grab them. As long as you're moving forward, you're okay. And and choosing a champion that maybe people are like, oh, that was a waste. Like there might you know, there's going to be people who say that. Uh, if it was moving you towards one of these goals, it wasn't a waste. It wasn't. Uh, you're going to get more time gate pieces. You're going to get more natural time gate weekends. Natural time, oh, I didn't even mention this. Natural time gate weekends usually happen every three weeks. They're on a cycle. It's a three week cycle for this game in terms of content drops. Uh, events happen on a three week cycle, uh, but events take, there's, there's a week off in between events usually. And during that week is when you have a natural time gate. That's when there's a new content drop for with adventures or variants for the game or both. And then that Friday of that content drop is a natural time gate weekend. Now, sometimes they do back-to-back -back events, and there's no natural time gate weekend. Sometimes they do back-to-back -back content drops, and there's two natural time gate weekends. 
It's going to vary, but on average, it's every three weeks. Uh, also, oh man, I'm remembering all the things I forgot. There's other ways to earn time gate pieces. Obviously you can buy, there's, there's sometimes there's packs in the shop where you can buy them for, they, they, they get included in a pack. It's usually the wild offers. This one would give me four, uh, time gate pieces. Uh, you know, you can get them that way. They're not in the regular packs. They're usually just in the wild offers. Uh, but just in game, there's other ways to get them. And that's, uh, from the patron shop. It's one of the reasons you unlock patrons right away, especially even though Mert, Mert costs three time gate pieces to unlock, but then he's immediately going to give you the opportunity to buy one back. And then every week you'll be able to buy every, every Monday, you'll be able to be a time, buy a time gate piece from Mert and all the other patrons. So that's a way to get four a week. Uh, and then there's a blessing that gives you double the time gate pieces when one drops off a boss. So that's two more. So that at that point, once you've unlocked all of the patrons and you have that blessing, you'll be able to run a time gate, a six, a six full cost time gate every week. You just got to work, get up to that point, right? Um, Mr. Weeks, should I get Mert's Silvery Gate perk before opening time gates? Uh, just unlock Mert as a patron. No, it is, it is hard to get the, it's going to, if you're brand, if you just unlock Mert, it is going to take a lot of work to get that, uh, to get that. That's a tier seven. That's a lot. Uh, I don't even recommend grinding patrons. It's a whole other, uh, tutorial, but I don't recommend uh, grinding patrons ever really. Uh, but I, I definitely don't recommend putting, recommend putting a lot of effort into patrons until you've, you've completed Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. And if you just unlocked Mert, I don't, I don't know if you've completed that yet. Uh, but even then you're only going to be able to get up to about tier five easily. Tier seven is usually Icewind Dale unless you grind a lot. So no, don't worry about it. Again, it's just a double silver. If it was a chance at a gold or something, it would have been a much better perk. And then I'd say, well, I would, and then I would encourage people to work towards it, but not grind it out just because they just unlocked it. Monkey, how do I get time pies? I mean, well, it's just a reference to, well, actually it was a reference to yesterday's show, but it's a reference to the, this being a, referred to as a pizza uh, or a pie, pie slices, pizza slices. That's, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Uh, so again, one of those time gate pieces is going to drop uh, off a boss naturally every five-ish days. Uh, Sunation. This is an interesting question, and I'm going to ask for more information, and Mars will just post it in chat, and Mars will... Uh, uh, oh, never mind. Oh, no. Yeah, no, 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 no. You have uh, one of the... You have one of the jackpot champions. Um, so I'm not even going to ask you the other questions. Sun Asian asks, newer player, have three good choices for my natural time gate. Krull, Zorbu, and Vin Ursa. I heard Zorbu was good, but you seem to like Krull first. Krull. Krull. I, I, and I'm going to combine this with a question that came in right before this from Steve or Stev. I'm going to go Steve because I just like saying Steve. Uh... When you say snowball for crawl, what does snowballing look like in this game? How does crawl impact gameplay? So here's why I'm going to tell Sun Nation crawl first, especially over Zorbu. There's two, there's a, there's an easy reason. And then there's a, and then there's a, a snowball reason. The easy reason is crawl is in slot six, which means you'll be able to get him in a formation pretty easily and level him up pretty easily. While Zorbu is in slot 12, he is a pricey boy to fit in your formation. Uh, and until you have a lot of favor, until you can level him up to like uh, 120, 150, somewhere around there, which takes a lot of favor, he's not going to beat out most likely your your lower uh, bench slot DPS champions. So, Kroll. How does Kroll snowball? This is the more important question. Kroll, Kroll provides two things. Without gear. Kroll provides deep pushing power via his plagues, plague uh, uh, pain specifically, uh, which basically is a debuff on enemies that increases the amount of damage they take. And he provides gold find by, a, by his plague pilfer, which increases the gold amount that that enemy drops. 
both of these things together, one, either one of those in a large way would, would be cool, but, uh, but you already get gold find off Jarlaxle, so whatever, but, uh, but the pushing power specifically can be a very big thing. Crawl has the ability to, he can, you can put plagues on all kinds of people. And when you kill some of the enemies, the plagues at times will transfer a new stack of it onto an enemy that already has one and you can get a higher value and those stacks multiply their values together. Remember earlier I was talking about how multiplicatively stacking things are good in this game. Crawl. So he has the ability with, if you multiplicatively stack pain, if you get, instead of just 10 stacks, you get 20 or 30 or 40. Those multiply together, and if you hit them, sometimes you get, like, your support champion setting your bud. Bud is your damage value indicator here, and normally your DPS should be doing that. But crawl. But crawl. There's a saying in this game, uh, just crawl things, and it replies to a lot of stuff. And one of them is, why is my support doing more damage than my DPS? Is crawl in your formation? Yeah. Crawl things. It's probably because there was a multi-stack of pain and the support hit that enemy and blew it up because of the multiplied increased damage, right? But it does the same thing with gold. You can get multiplicatively stacking gold too, and suddenly you will get a fountain of gold off an enemy and you'll be able to level up your champion so far. And then suddenly it's like, wait, why am I not able to, I'm not getting any gold and it feels like I'm not getting any gold anymore. It's because you earned so much off one enemy that now you're going 10, 20, 30, 40 levels before you're getting to the point where the gold scaling can catch up with what you earned off that one kill. But you, if you upgraded wisely, you will be able to push that. And that may be well beyond what you can normally push. And this game's core loop. So the thing you're repeating over and over again is loading into a formation, pushing as far as you can, earning gold. The gold goes up the further you go. Uh, that goal, when you complete the run, the gold turns into favor. Favor acts as a gold find multiplier in your next run. Next run you do, you're able to push further because you get more gold. More gold means you're upgrading your champions more, which means you're getting more power, which means you're pushing deeper, which means you're getting more gold, which means when you complete it, you get more favor, which means you get more gold find. Core loop, right? This is why this is why Krull is an early game snowball champion. He provides you deep pushing power, which on its own would give you would be good, but he backs it up with an it's sometimes incredible gold find, which gives you favor that you can either keep as your gold find multiplier or put into blessings, which gets you more power, right? To push deeper. It's a big, massive snowball early game. He's going to get you to the point where favor doesn't matter anymore really quickly. And at that point, you can take him or leave him. He isn't, he isn't always necessary. But, but he is going to be useful for you in terms of gold find throughout all of your campaigns uh, and even into the end game. And even into the end game. Uh, he is a chance. And again, he is incredibly strong right out of a time gate because a time gate isn't going to fully gear your champion out and crawl can crawl can can uh perform incredibly well as what we call naked which means completely gearless there are people who run challenge accounts that are called gearless accounts uh where they don't do any put any gear at all and crawls multipliers on his own make him a solid choice for gearless uh, which means he's a he's a fantastic pickup for a new player uh, I know Yuri, uh, hello, Garwar. should I farm time gate free plays or just leave it after finishing those three quests? Again, I really feel like the only reason to ever do a free play is if you didn't finish, if you, th if you think you can't, if you couldn't finish the variant and you need more favor, or if you think you left a little meat on the bone in terms of grabbing a silver chest, like if you were really close to another silver chest. Oh yeah. Shout out to the gearless folks from Mars. Mars invented uh, geared list for idle champions via uh, the vow of poverty challenge. That is effectively what a, what a gearless account uh, came out of. Uh, yeah. 
I'll come back to those. Let me see if we can get some more time based specific ones. Cyberhat, I get the only speed champion of the three the time gate gives me. It's Havilar, but I still don't know how she works. Okay, this is, I mean, this is kind of a thing that you have to understand. If you're going to pick up a speed champion, understand how their, how their speed works and if it's going to apply to you right away or not. Havilar is a slot 10 champion. She's a tank. She is also a speed champion. Her speed effect specifically is when you level her up to the point where her imps pop out, she gets a pair of imps right away. Uh, that first set of imps has a speed effect attached to them. And it, but it only applies if there are fiends on the screen. Fiends, not friends. Fiends. Without the friends without the R. Uh, those, and, and that's one of the, uh, that's, a, that's a pretty dominant enemy type in Mad Wizard, which is your early game gem farm. Uh, so when she's got those, her, her imps out, and there's imps on the screen that you're killing in Mad Wizard. What she's doing is she's giving you double credit towards your progress on that level for, for all those imp kills or for all the kills and stuff. Um, so she is a double credit champion, but only in that specific scenario. She doesn't need gear for it. She doesn't need uh, specializations for it. She is plug and play, which makes her a solid early pickup for a like starting gem find. Uh, she's also going to be a solid speed champion in Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus because guess what is all over the place in hell? <laughs> Fiends. Uh, all right. Do, 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 do. Emperor G, in the event free play, can you get silver chests every 100 levels you get? No, again, that's we're talking time gates. Again, events and time gates, two different things. Time gates, silver for every new 100 areas you go. Events, uh, they give you events you farm with tokens, uh, and every free play you do, you just have to get to area 50, you complete area, complete area 50, uh, you know, close the adventure, and you're going to get a random reward of a chest, and it's either going to be silver or gold. Again, two different ways of delivering uh, the chests. Uh, so, yeah. Ernizik. Uh, after I get both the silver and gold chests from a time gate, does it make a difference in which order I open them? Yes. If so, which ones should I open first? So, again, time gate, uh, champions out of a time gate. All the champions that you ever... Okay, I'm not going to be able to show them. All the champions... I keep thinking I can, but I'm in one. All the champions you can ever get out of a time gate are event champions. They all arrived in event. And whenever you're gearing up event champions, uh, there is an optimal order of opening chests. Now, out of a time gate, one could argue it isn't as important... Uh, to follow the order. And if you've never followed this order, if you open up a different, it doesn't matter. You're fine. But there is an efficient, an optimally efficient way to get your champions. Uh, so out of a time gate uh, and out of events, you're going to get uh, named silver and named gold chest. So this is a named silver chest. Silver Nahara chest. So silver champion chest. Gold champion chest, right? Also, from streams like this one and uh, from other places, podcasts and such, you can get codes for Electrum chests and you'll get about 30 of these a week. And you should, there's a, there's a channel in the Discord where you can collect them. The official Idol Champions Discord, they, they collect them all. It's like, the, it's like Pokemon in there. Uh, so that's why I have so many. I'm stocking them up for the next event champion that I unlock. Because what you want to actually do is open Electrums first. Electrums first. After you've popped Electrums, then you open the named Silvers. And the goal you're trying to reach here, before ever touching a named gold chest, is you're trying to get your champion's gear up to at least green. At least green. So if we go over here... You know, the, the first tier of gear, the first rarity is white, and then it goes green, then blue, then purple, right? We want to try to open up Electrums and Silvers until they're green. If after a time gate you pop what Electrums you have, you pop what Silvers you got, 
and you still have either empty slots or white gear, if you're trying to be efficient, if you have some patience, don't open the golds yet. You, again, you're going to be getting electrums. They drop a new electrum codes seven days a week. Some days more than others, but about 30 a week. And on a brand new champion, a brand new event champion, so somebody who isn't Brunor or an Evergreen, uh, someone like Deacon, Electrums are going to, uh, even though they say they drop gear for all champions you own, it isn't an equal chance if you have champions that are, are under geared in terms of rarity. So when you have a naked champion straight out of a time gate or straight out of an event, uh, you'll have all these other champions that are like blue or better. Uh, and then you'll have a, a funnel down to that champion that is brand new. And that, and those Electrum uh, chests, when you pop them, the gear is going to go straight towards that, that new champion. And thus you're taking the potential uh, of, you know, even if you're just brand new and you've only got a dozen other champions and you get one out of a time gate, instead of a one in 13 chance of getting a gear drop, which would happen if you opened your Electrums later, they're going to prioritize a champion that has less than blue. I don't know, I'm hearing the phrase a naked champion on my Saturday morning bingo card. Well, you should have. Uh, so yeah. Electrums first. Because the named chests are always going to drop on that champion. And if you open them first, you screw up that, that funnel. So it's, it's better to try to get the whites and greens from electrums and silvers. Start with electrums, follow up with your silvers. If it's not green, if it's if you don't have six slots that are green or better, by the time you're done there, wait to get wait and keep popping electrum chests. Wait and keep popping electrum chests. The reason is is gold has as rules for the gear that drop out of it. Gold electrums and silvers are both going to give you white, green, and blue. White, green, and blue. Uh Golds are going to give you green, blue, and purple. Purple, obviously, is the one you really want, but there's no way to really force that to happen outside of a pity timer. It's just going to be a long, it's going to be luck or a long-term grind to get full purple. But there are rules about getting greens and blues. They are guaranteed upgrades in gold chests. You're guaranteed an upgrade, and that upgrade's either going to be green or blue. If you can already get green out of Electrums and Silver Chests, you don't want to get that green out of a blue, out of a, out of a gold chest, excuse me. You want to get the guaranteed blue, because what that means is in six gold chests, so the equivalent of two time gates, you would be able to fully blue a champion. You would, you would end up with five blue, oh, that sounds crazy. You end up with five blue uh, pieces of gear minimum and a purple because of the of the pity timer, the way a pity timer works on a brand new champion. Pity timer when you start is four gold chests, so you get a you get an epic early. Uh, after that, it's ten. So so two time gates for a champion would get you full blue and and an epic. Um, so yeah, you want to go electrums silver, electrums name silver named gold. It's different when it's an evergreen champion. You just gear those up with regular silvers and regular golds. You don't worry about the electrums. You want to save your electrums for those new, uh, the new hotnesses that come out of uh, time gates and events. Uh, lots of good questions here. Let me try to see if there's any more about time gates specifically. Gamester5 asks, are time gates the only way to get chest gear item levels for older champions? Nope. Nope. Again, the other big way... Oh, we, we died. I got past a thousand, though. That was pretty good. With a speed formation. The other way are patron chests, right? So uh, every patron has different champions that qualify, so only good or evil champions for Mert, which means if I open a Mert chest, uh, gear is going to drop for only good or evil champions. If the champion I'm trying to gear up is in that pool, then I could buy Mert chests and open those. Um, so that's the other big way. Now, of course, you're going to have, uh, things like, uh, uh, weekend chests. Uh, is there a, where's the, where's the weekend? Here it is. 
gold questionable chests, right? So when a, when champions are included in a in a weekend chest, uh, if you sign up for the newsletter, you'll get one of those for free every week, and you might get lucky and pull an epic, right? Uh, but if you get the newsletter chest and you buy the three pack, well, again. Uh, guaranteed epic is four for a brand new one. I opened my newsletter chest already. The three pack from the shop for five bucks guarantees you an epic alongside the one that it already guarantees you right here. Oh my God, that's Ceramorphosis. I may have to buy this this weekend. Uh, that's, a, that's a good card. Uh, so, you know, buying a three pack, signing up for the newsletter is going to get you two epics. You just don't, it's just going to, the other one's going to, one's going to be guaranteed. It's going to be this card, if that's what's up for offer. The other is going to go randomly to one of these five champions. Uh, but time gates and patron chests are the way, see, here's my completion, here's my gold chest, are the way to get you uh, kind of just in-game earning. Now, of course, seasons, but seasons, you can't determine who's going to be in the season. The season chests are only for those, those champions. That's way to get to gear them up and get more item levels. Um, yeah. Uh, but currently that's it. Now, uh, I just pushed, I got, I pushed further than I normally would have. I pushed all the way to a thousand. Uh, I have a bunch of favor now. I have more than I need. Uh, so I'm not even going to push very far in this second run. I'm just going to get to my goal and bounce. How many silver chests did I get? 16. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good odds. Uh, do, 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 do. Emperor G, follow-up for chests. Should I open the named gold chest for the event before opening the group chests? Oh, like for like for the season champions. Or open the group gold chest, then the individual chests. Uh, all my Aking champs have green or better gear. Awesome. Uh, I, I would open the group ones first because it's going to be random as to where it goes and then share And then you can open the others. I don't think it really matters in all honesty. I think you go either way, but if it were me and I had a stack of them, I would, and I would trying to gear up champions, I'd open the group ones first to see where they fell. And then I'd go with the names, but I, I really don't think it matters. Honestly, I think you go either way. I think it's just, you know dealer choice there all right general questions and i know some of these are about like stuff that's related to it wasn't directly related to time gate so i didn't do them but we're going to get into the general ones like your writer asks is this a one or two root beer time gate weekend two i mean i've already started one and when i go out and get lunch later um you know i'm gonna get a like a combo meal it's gonna have a root beer with it uh freeman do you think cne uh thought or knew about how good briv was when he was released or was he patched afterwards? Oh, no. CNE had no idea. Uh, in fact, Justin has stated flat out that if, if he knew uh, how problematic for game balance Briv was going to be, never would have let him do some of the things that he does. Uh, they did nerf him. Uh, one of the few champions to get a nerf uh, in recent years. They did nerf him slightly in the sense that previously he could jump any boss all the time and they changed him after waiting in a long time uh to not be able to jump bosses on new content so on adventures and variants only in free plays um but i think if they could go back i think they wouldn't have allowed him to jump bosses at all i think they probably would have capped his speed effect at like four and they wouldn't have allowed him to jump bosses uh, he's, he's the, the gem, of, uh, economy was screwed up before Briv and Briv has just destroyed it. I say that as somebody who takes advantage of, it. I got over a million gems right now because of my Briv gem farm. Uh, D2 crafting one. What is the feat to triple the reward for seasons from Strongheart? Sure. Let's go over. It's the seasoned warrior. Seasoned warrior increases the effect of Strongheart's season night ability by a hundred percent. So it adds another 100% to the 100% and it gives you, well, it doesn't. It multiplies the 100% by 100%. It gives you double. And then you're tripling. It's, feats are weird. Yeah. Uh, there's something similar for patrons. Fen will give you double credit for patron challenges. Uh, and her, but her feet will give you quadruple credit. 
She has to be in the formation, though. Strongheart just needs to be owned. Critter Wolf, do you need a sp specific specialization for Strongheart to have it work on getting multiple levels of the season requirement? No, it's just a, it's just a straight up ability. Uh, his his specializations uh, have to do with other things. It's just his seasoned knight ability, which is literally the level twenty ability. Um, but again, you don't even have to have him in the formation or leveled up or whatever. I don't have him anywhere, and if I were doing season quest stuff right now, he would be he would be giving credit. It's just a an always on ability. The only one currently in the game. Uh, Robin, uh, wait, who are those meta pushing champions asking for a friend? Uh, <laughs> so, so let's name a couple off again. Uh, I said before, um, kind of the OP hotness is always going to be champions that have abilities that are multiplicatively stacking somehow. Uh, and who have an item or feed support that applies bonuses to the pre-stack. Why is that? Well, let's say if I'm let's say I'm stacking and I get five of something per stack. If it's additive, after two stacks I have ten. Like one stack is five, two stacks is ten, three stacks is fifteen. If it's multiplicative, one stack is five, yeah. two stacks is twenty-five, mm. three stacks is one hundred and twenty-five. Oh yeah, right? Multiplicatively stacking, way to go. Now, if you have a post-stack multiplier, you get to that 125 and you multiply it by 10 and you have 1250 and that's great. But if you have a pre-stack multiplier, we back up. It starts off with one stack at 50. If it was multiplying it by 10, it went from 5 to 50. Second stack... 2500 you see 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 the power here i don't even have to get to the third stack i'm not going to do it because i can't math on stream <laughs> what is it? What is it? 20, 20, 20, 12, is that yeah, i think it's 12,000. my god i can't do high level math on stream uh, i was trying to start with small numbers because i figured it'd help but then i did a 10 uh, bad pre-stack multipliers great pre-stack multipliers with pre with uh or multiplicative stacking great pre-stack multipliers even better and so when you have an item support that is a pre-stack multiplier that champion becomes the new hotness uh what are the hotnesses here I, i'm not gonna i'm gonna probably forget some of them uh bbeg uh has has some hotness uh out of uh sources of corpses there's multiplicative stacking there uh, Antrius has some uh, hotness out of suave and sophisticated. Uh, there's there's pre-stack stuff there. Uh, I can't remember if Valentine Valentine has a thing, but I can't remember if it's pre-stack or if it's just multiplicatively stacking. Uh, those are a couple. Uh, other people could probably help you out with a full list, and I'm not off the top of my head thinking clearly. Who do I think? Strongheart has one, for sure. The newer, the newer champions: Strongheart, BBG, Antrius. Those are all three uh, really strong in that regard. Uh, obviously, uh, if we go back in time, Artemis, stupid, sexy Artemis. Um, this is why it was what makes Artemis strong. Um, Krond is has has some craziness with survival of the fittest. It's kind of the same thing. So there's. They're out there. Uh, they're out there. There you go. There's probably more that I'm forgetting. Oh, yes. Jim's fan club. Oh, Jim. Jim Dark Magic uh, literally calls out on the item, increases the pre stacked effect of Jim's fan club. Oh, and Lazel and Astarian. Lazel and Astarian Ceramorphosis is multiplicatively stacks by the number of tadpoles in your party. So if you just have one or the other in, it doesn't do anything. But when you put them both in, they multiplicatively stack. And they have item support, so it's a pre-stack multiplier. Nrak has a tadpole feat, too. So when they add more, they've, they've said we're getting six or seven Baldur's Gate 3 origin characters in the game. So once they're all in... Potentially big numbers. We'll have to wait and see. 
Uh, PK Tenacious, let's say I have all the champions from Ack Inc. or any particular group, and I'm trying to upgrade the item quality of the champions. It's better to open the Ack Inc. chests or the chests of specific Oh, we kind of talked about this. Uh, again, it's since we're talking about the season and it's Ack Inc., I think you can go either way. I think you can go either way. Just know a group chest is going to drop chests for the whole group, or group chests are going to drop gear for the whole group. Uh, and once a champion gets full epic, it won't drop gear. Like it won't. It won't. If you get an epic, it's not going to dupe onto somebody. It'll go to somebody else that needs it. Um, I think you can go either way with that one. Just to be safe, I'd probably do the group chest first. Ricardo, so what are your thoughts on the season quest screen's new look? Oh. Someone likes to get all the info in one look. I think the only was the best way. I'm missing advantage to the new system. Uh, probably. You're probably missing whatever. Uh, look, here's the thing. This changed yesterday in a patch, folks. We used to see everything on one page, and now we don't. And now we don't. Uh, in a vacuum, which one do I prefer better? The other one, because I could see them all at once. But changes don't tend to happen in this game in a vacuum. Do I know why they changed this? No, but that's a good question to ask on the next idol, uh, Dev Insights, right? Because there very well may be a reason why they did this. Because the other screen might not be able to do what they need it to do with something that's coming. I don't know. I'm not on the development team. That's a question for them. So... Is there something we don't know? Hopefully. Hopefully. Oh, yes, that's right. Justin did say they were adding new t new quest types. So there you go. So there was no way they were going to fit everything onto that screen if they're adding a new quest type. I forgot they did confirm they're adding another kind of quest. So they're going to be adding a potentially a fourth quest type. And you're going to have to click through and, and look at different pages. Growing pains. People always hate change, and they're always going to rebel from change, even when it's good change. Uh, we just didn't see all the change happen at the same time, so don't understand the context of the change. Right. Uh, okay. Jorathonis, would I use Briv in my background gem farm, even if he has no item levels? You never put speed champions in background gem farms. Speed effects do not work in the background or offline. Speed effects will only ever work in your active party while you're online and actively playing the game. Ravmori, who would be the best general DPS choice for pushing and not counting Evergreen and Season Champions? Well, why not counting those? Because it just, I mean, I don't understand, I really don't understand the purpose of the question here. Because your best general DPS choice should, in general, the answer is whoever is available in your current adventure, that's your best DPS choice. Because variants are going to change those rules, right? Um, and, and the thing is, is you don't need a lot of DPS choices right now. Jim and Strix are available in the season and are going to give you solid DPS and you're going to be fed item levels and gear for them as a newer player. Those are your, probably your two best choices to go with. If you start running into variants where they're not available, then you've got to figure out, you know, or patrons, you've got to figure out what qualifications you need. And that's a much bigger question, right? There are a lot of strong DPS in the game now. Uh, Birdsong is bird strong right now. She's She got a big buff. She's a DPS and a support. Zorbu has been solid forever. Uh, Artemis is that, uh, you know, if you, if you can feed him a thousand or more item average item levels, which means... Over 5,000 total. He gets real strong. Uh, Kron with thousands of item levels. Real strong. Um, I use Narak lately, but it's because I use him in combination with other champions that make him a beast. Doesn't mean he's going to do that for everybody. So, it's it's tough. A Commodore... Well, Commodore Crux is an Evergreen. It doesn't really count. We said ruling out Evergreens and... Probably core as well. They're probably combining that. So yeah, I don't know. 
There's going to be a lot of different DPS choices, but early on in the game, what you're lacking isn't a DPS option. What you tend to be lacking is support options. They're useful in more places. And, and your early game DPS options tend to be just fine. Uh, okay. The Lurking Rider, which song were you playing at the end of the show? I was going to play Zorbu's song, but then I was trying to play it, and it turns out the audio file I have is corrupted. i got to re-record it. Uh, so it's going to be Deacon's Song of Doom. I was trying to go with Timegate Champions that, are, that have great songs. Uh, Freeman, why are the high damage in-game pushing champions evil? Are there viable alternatives? And they list Artemis, Kron, and War Duke. Uh, I, I use Narak. I've used Birdsong. I've used Zorbu. Oh, wait, Zorbu's. Zorbu should be evil, but he's, he's listed as good. Uh, yeah, there are other options, but... But the thing is, is people use Artemis and Kron and Warduk because they're kind of mathematically OP. They go for kind of, people are going to hate me for saying this, it's kind of easy mode, in a sense. You just throw a bunch of item levels, throw them in the formation, and then they just run to 2,000. Warduke would be the hardest one out of that group to build a formation around, because Warduke is weird. Uh, but but they require lots of item levels. It's a heavy investment. That's just why it's, it's the end-game thing, but... No, you don't have to go that way. So there's a lot of other viable alternatives. In fact, I don't like... A, a Lurking Rider made a comment earlier about Artemis being good early on and then better with high things. I don't think Artemis is very good early on. Artemis showed up as, as mid-tier DPS for me for the longest time. Now I've kind of got his... Because of the season, I have his item levels up at like 1,000, unfortunately. So he's probably better now, but... I had other DPS that were blowing them away with a much lower item level investment. So there's other DPS with other power curves, and it just kind of depends on where you are in the game and what you're trying to do. They have also hinted about, uh, well, not hinted, they've confirmed they're working on a, uh, they're working towards a fifth patron. And that fifth patron uh, would have a revolving, uh, well, not revolving, but ever changing, uh, potentially, uh, group of champions that qualify for it and they basically came out and said artemis would not work artemis would never be a champion in that group <laughs> and it's going to be the high-end uh, patron content so uh now whether whether Krond or war duke work there who knows but yeah. so finding other champion options for in-game stuff is a good idea uh, but it's kind of, you know, figure out who you've got, figure out what you want to push around. Uh, like I said, right now I'm using Rack and enjoying it. I support Rack with Birdsong. Uh, but you could also use Zorbu. It's basically because of BBEG and their int requirement. Sailnet, it's been a while since I played around with Click Debuff. Yeah, me too. I, I don't really think it matters much. I think, I think it's Click Debuff is still a thing... Um, for people who have the debuff champions and are just trying to break like a thousand for the first time, that was kind of the big deal of click debuff in the first place. But now with legendaries, you can just power further than click debuff ever could. Um, and you don't have to deal with the lag and the, and the manually having to babysit it. If any champions come out in the last year or so that would work in that type of formation, I haven't paid attention. Again, it's... It's an un for me. It's an unenjoyable aspect of the game, so I don't try to keep up with it. I mean, it takes my computer, which is you know I'm streaming. I've got all kinds of windows open, uh, and I'm still running 55 to 60 FPS on Idle Champions. Um, but if I try to click debuff, I instantly drop down into single digit FPS. It's just it's ridiculous. Uh, do more kale. What is the gem farm after Mad Wizard? It's brim. It's briv gem farming after Mad Wizard. Until you're ready to briv gem farm, you just stay in Mad Wizard. Um, and briv gem farming could be in any in a, in a variety of different adventures. It really depends on how you're setting it up. Ernest, like, what champion should I do a time get for in slot four? Last one needed for split the party. Uh, so 
slot four, uh, if you want a speed champion, sentry, if you want a pushing champion, and an OP one, Ontrius. So it depends on what you want here. Ontrius is kind of best in slot currently because of their multiplicatively stacking, pre-stack multiplying ability. Sentry is the, currently the only speed champion. Uh, I think you're fine either way. Valdemar Knight wrote other guides to gold and stacking champions, like the ramping and speed champions. Um, I don't know if there's guides to, I don't think, I mean, I've done a guide to Azaka farming, which talks about a lot of gold find champions, but maybe not all of them. Um, and I don't know what you mean by stacking champions, like multiplicatively stacking. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, uh, DZR, I'm trying to get through these. We only got a few minutes left. Uh, the DZR yesterday's free time gate, I got Xander. That's a choice. 15 lactum, five silver, and three gold. My Xander has now three green, two blue, and one epic. Was I lucky this weekend? Um, I mean, I. Yeah, I mean, you were lucky because you didn't hit the pity timer and got an epic. Yeah. Otherwise, that looks like a fair distribution. Uh, because otherwise it would have been three blues out of those three golds, as long as you got to green, full greens with those electrums and those silvers, which probably did. Jorathonis, is Briv effective in the active party with no item levels? Not really. I mean, I mean, he's an effective tank, and his speed effect will trigger occasionally, sure. But Briv needs item levels to really come online. Um, he will be a solid tank. Uh, a sol he will be your best tank your best healer, uh, an okay support, and an occasional speed champion with no gear. But Briv is, a, is an example of a heavy investment champion. Probably the, the number one example of a heavy investment champion. Because people will put a hundred and over a hundred or over 127,000 item levels on Briv. They will try to get that far with Briv. I can't. I won't. But people do. Corinth Battle Spire have quite a few champs with decent gear, but I haven't completed any of the man campaigns, uh, nor have I run Split the Party. You have 55 champions and you haven't... Yes, Split the Party. Split the Party. You have 55 champions across 12 bench slots. Split the Party should be available to you. I would hope. But if it isn't, yeah, start... Start triggering Split the Party. The second you can do, the second you qualify for Split the Party, you can complete it. I have a guide that explains it to you, if that's all you want is an explanation to try it. But then it literally babysits you through Split the Party 1 and Split the Party 2. And I don't have a babysit for Split the Party 3, but after you do 1 and 2, why can you not do 3? <laughs> it's the same thing. Uh, that's a Gara rant, right? Mini Gara rant there. <laughs> Uh, eventually I'll do the three too, but yeah, go do it. 55 champions and then didn't run to split the party. Go split the party. Yeah, absolutely. Hashtag Bruner lives. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. It's 127th on item levels on one item, uh, which means you have that across five items. Uh, it's, you know, I investing 600 over 600,000 item levels into one champion, just to make him work, just to make him jump faster or further is is wild, but people do it. That's literally an in-game goal in this game. Uh, but but he's the first champion when I'm playing a new player account. He's the first champion I will try to hunt down and unlock, generally speaking. Uh, and he's the and he's where I dump my blacksmithing contracts early uh, because the return on those item levels becomes huge. Even if the gear isn't great, the return on the item levels, it, it is a snowball in and of itself. Because the more item levels you put into Briv, the further he's going to help you push, but also the more often he's going to jump. And then the further he's going to jump, which gets you more gems faster, which gets you more, which lets you buy chests faster, which blah, 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 blah. Some people prefer to do the Human first, but I like the Briv first because I like the combination of pushing deep with, with a solid tank that no one's going to knock over uh, and and also getting uh, the speed. And also getting the speed. Uh, last question, how much uh, from Zoldan, how much does Briv need for four jump? If it's a golden epic like mine, 3,626 item levels on this one item. On this one item. If it's not golden, higher than that. 
And if it's not epic, um, you're probably not close to the item levels. Like you get to the point where, uh, like bef while it's still blue, you just want to kind of aim for like one guaranteed one jump chance to 20% chance to jump two, or maybe even getting to guaranteed two jump. But really then you really, at that point, you should probably be hitting that hitting either patron chests or briv time gates to get you, uh, hunting that, that, that epic your dinner axe. Uh, but don't try to go in, don't try to just farm Briv time gates early on as a new player. That's, that's a waste. That's wasteful. Uh, all right, folks, that's it for today. Uh, streams on this channel will return on Tuesday, Tuesday. Uh, oh, I'll follow Does getting to the shiny lower the required item level? Yes. The gilding requires, lowers uh, required item levels because gilding increases power and that's shiny and golden. That's why I said golden epic. 3626. The shiny would be a little lower or would be a little higher. Uh, no gilding at all would be higher. Uh, no more no more streams on this channel for the weekend. Uh, I will be streaming on my channel in an hour ish, maybe sometimes a little earlier, sometimes a little later. Cause I gotta go get lunch and eat it. I'll be playing Baldur's Gate three. I play as my dwarven character, Garawar grudge keeper. Uh, and it's a blast. Uh, we're currently in Rivington, if you know what that means. Uh, so come join us over there and hang out if you would like. Uh, again, streams on this channel back on Tuesday. I'll be streaming Idle Champions on my channel on Monday, Twitch TV slash Garwar. Uh, you can see it down below or you can click uh, on my name in chat right there. Uh, so yeah. That's it. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Again, this, thanks to Mars for grabbing all the questions. Thanks to you for asking all the questions. Uh, the song we're going out on, Deacon's Song of Doom. <laughs>
Go!